In this series of videos I'm attempting to repair and restore an HP 9845B computer system. So far in this series I've dismantled the unit into its major sub-assemblies and I've started cleaning them up, reassembled the chassis and the main motherboard and I'm now working on the power supply. It's a fairly unusual supply on this, quite interesting to work on, actually quite nice to work on if you're familiar with some of the supplies of this era. They can be a pain to work on, very hard to get to the various parts. But this is uh, very nice to work on, you can get to everything, all the boards unplug, and uh, it's even easy to remove from the machine, it just uh, pulls out after taking a few screws out. So it's very nice to work on. Also a lot of fun in terms of uh, working on it from the electronics perspective, it's a very interesting piece of electronics. Quite a high power output um, supply. I think I said the 5 volt rail puts out 30 amps, it's actually currently limited to 30 amps, it's rated at 15 amps. And uh, what I've been doing is um, going through, checking all the power devices, checking all the caps, and as you can see now I've got it hooked up to some electronic loads. I'll power this up in a few minutes so you can see uh, what I've been doing. Now for the most part it all seemed to work, but in the previous video I expressed concern about the plus 18 volt rail. So it's a uh, pulse width modulation type power supply and so it has a high voltage DC supply that is produced on the main motherboard, that's the board at the bottom, and that is then fed into a chopper board, that's the big board at the back, that creates a, an alternating current that's fed to two regulator boards and through some transformers on those boards to give fully isolated outputs. We've got this larger board on the right here and that provides all the main electronics supplies, there's quite a few rails on this, and the smaller board on the left provides all the uh, power for the mechanics, so printer, motor, that sort of thing. You can run the uh, entire supply with the smaller of these two boards removed, and it won't work properly because the reset line will stay uh, in its inactive state, stay in the, the low reset mode. Um, but you can still test all the rest of it. But I've now got it fully assembled and as I said I've been hooking it up to electronic loads. And sure enough when I connected the 18 volt rail it measured about 17.5 volts with no load but as soon as I put a 100 milliamp load that rail collapsed and it started uh, reading somewhere around 11.6-11.7 uh, volts. I put a scope on it, there was a huge amount of ripple and what I found was causing it, uh, you may recall there were a couple of diodes that had shown signs of overheating, so I changed those and um, one was starting to fail but that wasn't uh, the main reason for the problem. Like I said there was a huge amount of ripple so I suspected the smoothing cap, I removed that and it is testing a bit odd, it's uh, testing as a fairly low um, capacity but very high ESR. So I was going to change that anyway, but what I found before I took this out was that the main failure was due to the uh, through hole plating having failed on the ground pin of this capacitor. So it sits back here, you can't see it, it's, I've replaced the cap of course, I put a new one in. Um, but I also repaired the board where the it's, it's next to where the board was overheating and there's a brown area that uh, showed some significant signs of burning and it had got so hot that one of the through hole plates um, holes had basically failed it had disconnected just underneath the capacitor so the ground lead of the cat was effectively not connected so I repaired that and unfortunately the ground trace for that is on the top side of the board. So I scraped away some of the solder mask, soldered a wire on, passed that through the hole, put the new cap in, soldered the two together, reassembled it and it's now working fine. So what I did from that point on is just start loading up all the supplies. So I'll turn this on and just demonstrate uh, what I've been doing. Now unfortunately these Kunkin supplies do cause a lot of flicker on the camera. So I'll turn off one of the lights and that will reduce the flicker 
hopefully you can still see what I'm doing. So as I said I'll turn off one of the lights that will hopefully cut down the flicker. We'll enable these and then we'll turn on the supply. So as you can see the load on the left is monitoring the plus 18 volt rail and the one on the right is monitoring the 5 volt rail. I've got the 5 volt rail currently set to 4 amps and the uh, plus 18 set to 300 milliamps which is about for the 18 volt rail it's about what it would normally run at and as you can see it's nice and stable and uh, close to 18 volts in fact it is slightly over 18 volts if we measure it at the supply the drop is of course the drop in the leads going to the loads I could use remote sensing but uh, it's not that important for this test uh, measured at the supply it's almost exactly on 18 volts so the other thing uh, I've been testing is the shutdown characteristics. It is important that this um, supply does what it's supposed to in terms of the protection. So each of the two boards, the two regulator boards, has an overcurrent sense transformer that is built into the system. And the purpose of those is if either of the two boards draws too much current, it will cause the supply to shut down. So what I've been doing is on each uh, regulator board, in for example the 5 volt rail, I slowly increase the current one amp at a time and when I got to 24 amps on the 5 volt supply the overcurrent kicked in and it shut the supply down which is what it should do so that was working. I did a similar thing for the second board using the plus 13 volt supply and when I got to 3 amps on that it shut itself down so that's all working fine exactly the way it's supposed to work and the other thing this has is um, it's got over voltage shutdown and perturbance shutdown so uh, you recall this has um, a reset a power on reset circuit and if you monitor that with a scope and you turn the 5 volts or one of the other rails load on and off you'll see that you'll get a reset pulse it will try to reset the machine uh, if you go too far the power supply should shut itself down so I'm going to try and demonstrate how I go about testing this because it is quite a difficult thing to test now I do not suggest you do this at home unless you know exactly what you're doing it is quite a dangerous thing to do I don't know if I ever said why I left out the two large reefer caps I took them out because they were failing but I don't think I ever said why I'd left them out and that is so I'd carry out this test so if we get one of the replacement caps the supply is currently powered up but what I'm going to do is to momentarily touch this across the uh, 300 volt rail that's feeding the chopper board and in theory that sudden spike should cause the um, supply to shut itself down it should stay shut down when I remove this it should stay in its off state shouldn't do any damage if it does do some damage then obviously something else is not working but it should just shut down and stay shut down until we cycle the power so I'm going to do this now like I said I do not suggest trying this at home I would normally actually solder leads to the um, position on the board and do this through a little switch box I have but for demonstration purposes I'm just going to touch this across where the capacitor would normally be soldered to the board. And as you can see the supply has shut itself down. So I'll cycle the power and it should come back to life without any problems. We'll do that one more time. And as you can see, it has once again shut itself down. Cycle the power. And it's come back to life. The other thing we want to check is the power on reset pulse. So I'll move the camera across a little bit. We'll bring in the multimeter. We're going to test this relative to logic ground. And turn the light back on and we should now find that the reset is high if you remember before it was low all the time whereas now it's high 
recycle the power you can see it goes back high if you put a scope on here you will see it as I say uh, providing reset pulses if the supply misbehaves at all and that will cause the machine to reset um, but it's all working I've tested all the rails and I've run each one up for uh, I've given them about six seven hours each and um, I've run up I haven't got enough electronic loads for every single rail there's about nine rails on this but I've been doing five at a time most of the rails are relatively low power so um, I'm not having to run up uh, huge power bills doing this and as I said before I am putting a fan in front of the supply when it's doing these tests but I've been running it uh, somewhere around the sort of 150 watt total output um, range and every single supply rail is now behaving exactly the way it's supposed to. I'm not getting any unusual smells, nothing's getting hot, I have been watching this through the thermal camera, nothing is getting warmer than it should do and so I'm going to give all the rails a few more hours each and then I'm going to put this back into the chassis inside its uh, metal box and run it up again on load make sure that it still doesn't overheat or do anything wrong and the reason I'm going to so much trouble is because there are parts in the machine that are pretty much uh, irreplaceable impossible to find so I really don't want to do any damage to them but uh, hopefully you can see that these supplies are relatively easy to work on and uh, quite interesting in terms of their design so in the next video we'll get this refitted to the chassis assume that I don't get any issues if I do get some issues I will of course uh, get those on camera and um, show you what went wrong but uh, fingers crossed this supply is now fully functional